After watching the GLM videos, you must have the question of, should you use these models and if so, when and why? And that's the question that I will answer in this video. The question number one out of two questions of whether GLM is required or is, is useful is, is transformation required? So uh, what do you think is the nature of the relationship between your independent variable and the dependent variable? Is it linear and additive? So do all the independent variables work separately so that the effect on the dependent variable is their sum? Or is it exponential and multiplicative? Which means that you multiply the effects of independent variables together to get the effect on the dependent variable. Or is it perhaps the S-curve when the uh, effect is first very small, then increases and then it's very small because everybody is at, at 100% already. So this is a question that is uh, about theory and uh, what kind of relationships you expect. It's not about question of how the dependent variable is, it is distributed. So this is a primarily uh, a modeling decision, not a data decision. My practical recommendation is that you should always start with linear regression analysis and then do diagnostics, do an added variable plot, do a residual versus fitted plot and see if there is evidence of non-linearity. If there is, then you consider these alternatives. Of course, you may have a strong theoretical reason to believe that an exponential model or an s model is preferable, but still doing the regression analysis is, is very cheap. It doesn't cost you much time and it'll tell you something that you didn't know before most of the time. So starting with regression analysis is, is a nice idea, is a good idea. Then the third consideration is that some textbooks and some articles say that you should transform the dependent variable to reduce heteroscedasticity so that your standard errors will be correct. And uh, this decision has nothing to do with standard errors whatsoever. The, uh, the decision of, of, the, uh, of which transformation you apply is driven by theory. What do you think is the best explanation for the data? And the consideration for standard uh, errors is, is secondary to that. And you can always use robust standard errors to, to deal with any heteroscedasticity issue anyway. So this is driven by theory, not about standard error consistency or about the kind of data that you have. The next question is that once you have decided that you want to transform your, your dependent variable somehow, you can also transfer your independent variables, but this is mostly focused on the dependent variable. Should you transform the dependent variable and then apply regression on the transformed values or should you apply generalized linear model where you transform the fitted value instead of the dependent value. There are simple points for and against both decisions. Simple points for transforming the dependent variable is that it's simpler to do. So there are no computational issues, regression analysis will always give you results and you can also use our OLS diagnostics. So regression analysis diagnostics are very useful. They are more developed than diagnostics for GLM and you can find more resources on how to do those. Also regression analysis is well understood. Uh, for example, the nature of multiplicative effects as I explained in previous videos uh, is something that many researchers don't fully understand. So regression analysis is more commonly understood by your readers, reviewers, and review, uh, readers and reviewers than GLM. There are, there are points against transforming, simple points. Transforming a variable with a few discrete values is problematic. If you have a count variable with one, two, and three, then trying to do some kind of uh, inverse Poisson transformation on that wouldn't make much sense because it still has three, di three discrete values. If you have one, ones and zeros, the binary dependent variable, transforming a binary dependent variable will give you another binary variable. So it doesn't do anything. And then you have the issue that if you want to, for example, explain company size and you want to explain that with an exponential function, some companies have zero revenue. So uh, how do you deal with those zeros? Because you can't take a log of zero. And then you need these awkward workarounds where you add plus one to the dependent variable before you take the log. So these are simple points against transforming. There are, there's a more rigorous way of looking at this issue and uh, it's looking at, let's look at this uh, GLM model and the transform model. Typically we are interested in explaining what is, the, what is the mean of the data or the expected value of the data given the independent variables in which case we look at the nonlinear regression model. If we apply this transform dependent variable model and we treat these transformed 
uh, this coefficients here as if they were estimates for this original model of interest, then uh, they are actually inconsistent. So uh, the transformed equation is an inconsistent estimator for the original equation. So statistically thinking, uh, you should never transform the dependent variable. You should always use uh, the GLM because the transformed variable is inconsistent estimator of the GLM. That may not be enough to convince uh, all the people, but uh, let's take a look at examples. So uh, I have this data set here. This is um, the, the, pre the prestige data set that I've used before. And uh, we have the distribution of income for professions that are more than half men and distribution of income for professions that are less than more than half women. So we have men dominated and women dominated professions. And we are interested in knowing uh, whether men dominated professions uh, make more money than women dominated professions. And this is something that we would typically want to answer with men make 20% more or 50% more instead of saying that men make uh, 4,000 uh, Canadian dollars more. Because the percentage is something that uh, we typically think in these kind of comparisons. So uh, how do we do it? We want to look at percentages and uh, we do a uh, transform dependent variable regression analysis. We get some estimates here. Then we can calculate predictions using these estimates. So the predicted lines are here in the equation, in the plot here. We can see that there are the predictive, predicted lines here are less than the actual sample means. So the model predicts the sample means a bit incorrectly, it predicts them too low. So they are predicted in erroneously. And they also, the model predicts the difference between the men and women, that, uh, when a men and women dominated professions to be smaller than what it actually is. So both the actual means and the difference between the means are predicted incorrectly. The difference is, is not great, but it, it's noticeable. So based on these considerations, uh, the GLM approach should always be preferred over transforming the dependent variable. Of course, doing the transformation of the dependent variable using OLS, doing the diagnostics, that's, that's a good starting point. But in the end, doing the GLM is, is more rigorous and that's what your uh, final, the end product of your research should be. There's a nice blog post about this uh, from William Gold, who is the founder of Stata. And, uh, he makes a strong case and with some nice references that that's actually how you should do it. So don't log transform the dependent variable. Use the Poisson GLM or QIML estimate instead and with, with robust standard errors. That gives you better estimates than the regression on the transform dependent variable. So what are the practical recommendations? Uh, once you have decided that you want to use one of these transformations, then uh, what's the modeling technique that you should apply? So uh, linear additive model, least squares, always. No, uh, no reason to use anything else. That's uh, OLS is the best and uh, weighted least squares could be slightly more efficient in some scenarios, but uh, it's not worth the effort to do that. If you have exponential uh, model with multiplicative relationships, uh, then uh, if you know the distribution of the dependent variable given the fitted values, then use the maximum likelihood estimation of the uh, generalized linear model with the correct distribution. So if you know that it's Poisson, you know it's negative binomial, you know that it's something else, then apply uh, the normal GLM. If you don't know what the distribution is or you're uncertain about the distribution of the dependent variable or you know that it doesn't follow any of the distributions than your, that your statistical software supports, then apply Poisson quasi-maximum likelihood estimation with robust standard error. So this is uh, kind of like it's a similarly safe choice than uh, using OLS is for the linear model. For the SQR models it's the same thing. If you know the distribution, so if you know that you are using fractional uh, response data and you know that the dependent variable is, is beta distributed given the predicted values, then use a beta regression analysis. So maximum likelihood GLM with the correct distribution. Otherwise, if you don't know the distribution of the dependent variable, then uh, use uh, Bernoulli quasi-maximum likelihood with robust standard errors. So if you have fractional response data, then uh, pre uh, basically I would always recommend that you use uh, 
just the normal logistic regression analysis for that because it, it works. Uh, you, would, uh, you would think that it doesn't, but it actually does as long as this approach has been a program to your computer software. Now, this has nothing to do with the transformation of the independent variables. So uh, this is about the dependent variable. Transforming independent variables is OK. And uh, you can consider the log transformation or sometimes even exponential transformation of the independent variables to get a model that, that you think explains your data well based on your theory. And then you estimate it with uh, either OLS or GLM. This is, more, this is about what you do with the dependent variables. The final question is that uh, is this uh, GLM and transforming the fitted value versus transforming the dependent value, is it a big thing? So um, let's do an empirical example. So we have here two models. Um, we are using the prestige data. We have uh, years of education here. We have the predicted uh, predictions from these two models, transform dependent variable and GLM effects on, on income. When we look at the regression coefficients, we can see that there is uh, a 7.5% difference. So this is 1.0.119, this is 0 0.128. So 7.5 difference, uh, that is uh, substantial. In, in many methodological papers, we think that 5% bias is net, it's something that you can ignore. But this is 7.5% uh, difference, is something that, uh, that we, could care, we should care about. Also, when we look at the predictions here, we can see that the transport dependent variable systematically under predicts uh, how much there are, there are professions that require high education actually make. And this blue line here is a lot better fit to the data. So that's empirically, uh, it's, it's not a huge difference, but it, it's something that, uh, that I think we should be uh, concerned about because the fix is rather simple. Now the question is, final question is that if um, and, and when I get papers to review what the authors use uh, a transformation on the dependent variable, uh, should I, do I uh, recommend that those papers are rejected because they don't use uh, the, the, uh, the GLM approach or quasi-maximum likelihood estimation of Poisson instead of the transformation of the dependent variable? No, I, I would not say that this, uh, this, uh, this red line is worthless. I'm saying that the blue line is better and I would probably recommend that the authors uh, to take a look at, at some articles that I've cited here that explain why the blue line is better than the red line and then tell them to make an informed decision.